Even when I was little, I was a pain to take new places. This one time, my sister and her boyfriend at the time went out to dinner with me. That sounds weird. No, I went out to dinner with them because I was little. And uh, I ended up reading all the awful, terrible things that I saw written on the walls in the bathroom. And I wouldn't stop. I was just, I was so starved for reading that I just started to read aloud all the ignorant, awful, bigoted shit that I read on the walls. And I remember my sister's boyfriend was like, oh no. And he picked me up and carried me out of the bathroom. When someone meets my family, they inevitably ask, how are you, you? Why is that, you ask? <laughs> Have I got a story for you. So around the holidays, my family, for the most part, uh, always goes up to the city to see the tree in Rockefeller Center. Um, but this year, for the last couple of years, we haven't done that. And uh, this year, I went up to visit a friend who was visiting the U.S. And on my way home, on the train ride back, this dude gets on the train, and he's sitting in the same car as me. And you could tell he had no friends sober, but he was incredibly wasted at this point. So he was trying really, really, really hard to make friends on this train ride back. And <clears throat> I've always, like, you know, you always think about people fighting on a train. And I always expected it would be, like, if there was going to be a fist fight on a train, I was expected to be two really belligerent drunks. But no, it was just this one drunk dude who really, really, really wanted to make friends because obviously he had none. He, he, there was no way that you could tell look, by looking at him, there was no way this guy has any friends. He's a lonely motherfucker and he's drunk as shit and he's trying real hard to make friends. And his way of trying to make friends on this train ride back at like two in the morning was to try and be philosophical about life with everyone who sat around him. Okay, so... This really drunk dude with no friends, he starts talking to the people around him. And his question is, he starts off with the same question each time. He goes, where are you going? And the first person who answers, obviously a college student, looks like the really big creepy dude that I went to, to college with. And I wasn't sure at first. I was like, mm. and then I was like, no, okay, cool. Different big creepy dude. And the creepy dude was like, I'm going home. And drunk guy is like, no. Where are you going? I don't know why I gave you guys a Jedi mind trick while I said it, but but he's he's trying to be so fucking deep, but he's obviously not, and also he's drunk as fuck. Yeah. Where are you going? And college student is like, oh, and drunk guy's like, no. Where are you going? And college kids like, um, um, I'm going home so I can get some sleep and then come back and take my classes. Like, I don't know what you want from me. And drunk guy's like, no, that's a shitty answer. I mean, where are you going in life? Where are you going? Where are you going in life? You should have lied to me, not told me the truth. And at this point, my ears perk up. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. What's going on here? This is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And drunk guy tries really hard to get college kid to lie to him about his life for some reason. And then he stands up and he starts asking the same four questions, starting with where are you going to the people around him? And he starts asking them louder and louder. And I'm kind of like, I want to watch, but I don't want him to talk to me specifically. So I'm kind of like, I got like my eyes just over the chair in front of me. I'm like, I, I want to see where this goes, but I don't want to be a part of it. I, I, no, I, I don't want to be a part of it. <clears throat> and he sees this middle-aged white guy, like three seats ahead of him with Beats headphones on. And I'm, I'm saying that specifically because drunk guy then goes, take this old man with Beats headphones on. Take him. He's content. He's got his headphones on. He doesn't care about this conversation. And I'm like, I don't know where you're going. I understand that you're drunk. I don't understand where you're going with your deep conversation. If you're like, this conversation doesn't matter because what? what? <clears throat> and at this point, he had been standing up and pointing at middle-aged white dude beats headphone. So after he says he's content, he doesn't care about this conversation. Middle-aged white dude takes off his, ba his beats headphone, stands up and goes, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, whoa. He thought he wasn't paying attention, but he was. Also, because drunk guy was 
practically screaming while he was standing and pointing. I'm sure the Beats headphone, you know, being that they cost like 30 cents to make in a sweatshop, probably not that good at noise canceling anyway. And then drunk guy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he starts to ask someone else the questions. And the third guy he asks stands up and is like, buddy, buddy. And you know when you hear buddy, it's really like Dan Cook says, when you hear buddy or pal, it's those words, but in between there's fuck face. This is a path, fuck face, and then L, or bud, fuck face E. That's, that's what you hear. And so the third guy stands up, he's like, buddy, buddy, nobody here wants to be your friend, okay? So just sit down and shut the fuck up. And drunk guy is not having any of this because he's drunk and he really, really, really wants to make friends. So he's like, <gasps> and he, he's obviously hurt by this statement. <gasps> Was I being aggressive? I don't think I was being aggressive. I just wanted to know where everyone was going. And they're like, oh my God, shut up. Just sit down, shut up. Don't say anything to anybody. Stop it, stop, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And the drunk guy's like, all right. And he sits back down and I'm like, he is never going to have any friends. No, he's probably exactly like that, sober where he tries so hard to make friends with people that he just can't do it. So drunk guy sits down and he goes, I'm sorry. And everyone's like, all right, cool. We're gonna get on, we're gonna keep going on this train. We're all gonna get home, it's gonna be fine. We're good. And I'm like, that was a very strange encounter. But drunk guy, he's got the perseverance in him. He knows he can try and make a friend with these people anyway. So he pokes college student first and he's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, that was actually it's a pretty good move on your part. And then he starts talking again. I'm like, oh my God, give up. It's not happening. You're not making friends. You're going to be lonely forever if you keep this up. And then college kid is like, why are you talking to me still? Shut up. <laughs> uh, I just turned into Rod. That's what happens when I shoot Rod's ultimate in, in, uh, in Smite. I always go, and then I annihilate people. Um, but, uh, uh, shut up. <laughs> Drunk guy then pokes the third guy, the one that really screamed at him. And it's like, I'm sorry. And drunk guy and old dude with Beats headphones are just pissed at this point that he's still trying to talk to them. And I think at this point, because Beats headphones guy and third guy both stand up at the same time, I'm like, ooh, there's gonna be a fight. He's peeking over the top of the chair. And third guy looks right at drunk guy and I'm like, oh, oh, here's where the fun starts. And he goes, fuck you, buddy. And you know, at this point, there's definitely, it's not even thinly veiled anymore. He's saying buddy, but really he's saying fuck face. So it's, there's, there's, there's no thinly veiled anything here. And drunk guy's just like, oh. And you can tell he's realized at this point, even though everyone else in the car had realized probably the first time he told the college kid to start lying about his life. Uh, that he wasn't going to make any friends, but that's when it sunk into him. And Beats headphones guy and third guy walk out of the car. And I'm just like, man, sucks to be drunk guy because you know he has no friends sober. And if he can't make friends drunk, then you can't make friends at all. Because I'm pretty sure third guy was also slightly inebriated at least. And he seemed to be totally okay until drunk guy started his, his, his stuff. And it's just, you feel bad. I expected a fight that day, but I didn't expect to see a man just like collapse into nothingness and despair. That wasn't what I was expecting to see. And that kind of made me sad, but I wasn't going to be his friend either. No, no, that guy, that guy has some shit he needs to work out first. Also, I'm sorry if this video is kind of dark, but it's like, rainy and nasty outside and i'm not allowed to have a light uh i don't know if i've told you that story already uh if i have it you're going to hear it at some point but i'm not allowed to have a light in my room so i have a a a uh spotlight here like a stage spotlight that you clip onto a wall that gets so hot it's actually melting its casing um and then i have my regular like nightlight lamp because my mom fucking loves nightlights i have no idea why i don't know 
which one of us, and there's only two people that live here. I have no idea which one of us is afraid of the dark. I'm pretty sure it's neither of us, but my mom has to turn on like 85 lights. My favorite is when she's not here, she turns on night lights. I'm like, what the fuck? I understand if you want to put the light on outside so it looks like you're waiting for someone, even if no one is here, but she'll come in the house and she'll turn on like 85 lights and then leave. No, stop it. Nobody here needs that kind of, no, 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 no. But back on track. Uh, this one time I went to the city with my family when we were going on one of those Rockefeller Center trips um, during the holidays. And we're walking down the city block and every like four steps, whoever is behind me hits me in the back of the leg right by my knee right behind my knee like every four steps and i'm like oh 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 and after like the sixth or seventh hit i start to get pissed and i'm young and stupid at the time so i get pissed out loud and i'm like oh my god Whoever is behind me, I swear to fucking God, if you hit me in the back of the leg one more time, I'm going to turn around and kick you in the throat. Now, that sounds like a very strange threat, but back in the day, that was like when I was in Taekwondo and I was limber and I was in good shape physically. Uh, to this day, I could probably still kick most people in the neck, um, but back in the day, that would have been a drop shot. If I kicked you in the neck, you would have been knocked the fuck out or I would have broken your neck. Like, I, I, that was a legitimate threat coming from me back in the day. And three more steps later, wham, hits me in the back of the knee. Back of the knee? Back of the knee. Uh, I crumple. I'm so pissed that I turn around. It was weird because he hit me when we had stopped. So whatever he was holding swung forward and smacked me. And he hits me in the back of the knee. I crumple for the last time. I turn around and I go, ah! And when I turn around and growl at nothing, I'm confused. I'm looking straight ahead as I've turned around. I've made the noise. There's no one there. I'm like, what, what, what? I look down. There is a tiny Hispanic guy. Probably just past four feet. Like, this guy is short. And he's holding a sack of what is obviously presents that's about the same size as him. And there's... the. <laughs> So, turn around. There's nothing there. Look down. Make eye contact with him. Like, take him all in. Realize who he is. This is a man that's so short, I could definitely kick him in the throat. I could definitely kick him in the throat. It's not like a, oh no, I have to kick high, which most people don't expect, but I can do. This guy's short. I would definitely have been able to kick him in the throat. Make eye contact with him. See his bag. Like, oh, he's got a present sack that's enormous. He's a very nice guy. I feel kind of bad. When we make eye contact, he realizes he's about to get kicked into the throat. And I'll never forget, once we make eye contact, the fear in his eyes, and he goes, yeah! and fucking books it through the crowd in the other direction. Just fucking scurries off like a mouse. And I'm like, oh. that was not the reaction I was expecting. Many things could have happened there, but that, that was not the reaction I was expecting. My family's with me and they're like, it's Christmas! How could you be so rude? And I'm like, that dude hit me in the back of the kneecap like 35 fucking times. Okay, okay, I don't want to be on the floor of this dirty street. All right, it wasn't all my fault. It was not all my fault. I didn't know it was a present sack. I honestly thought he was kicking me in the back of the leg to be an asshole. Like, it's New York City, I would expect no less. Oh my God. Speaking of places that you should never go. All right. Have you, any of you guys ever seen I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell? There's a scene in I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell where someone pours eye drops into his drink. And I don't know if you know this, but if you pour eye drops into someone's drink and they ingest it, it makes them shit. It makes them shit forever. And uh, there's this nasty scene in the movie where he poops so hard that he runs out of toilet paper. He shits everywhere. He has to use his own clothes as toilet paper. And then he walks back to his room, still kind of dribbling shit naked and he walks past the cleaning lady and he just goes Haciendo. and just keeps walking and she goes into the bathroom and she's like Ay, Dios mio! um but yeah i went to pick up a friend at the airport and i stopped at a oh we stopped on the way back at a rest stop uh, it was me valley of and the friend that i picked up 
And as I'm going into the bathroom, I see in like the little closet for the janitor that's before like all the stalls, the janitor's in there and he looks so upset. And when I walk past, I'm like, I'd be upset too if I had to clean people's shit all day. Like not, not saying that he's beneath me or whatever, like being a janitor is a very underappreciated job. Uh, but I, I couldn't imagine cleaning people's shit all day. And as I'm walking down the line of stalls in this rest stop, your typical fare, you know, there's pee all around the toilet because guys can't aim for some reason. Um, the usual, some pee. There might be a floating turd here or there. You get past this one stall, the door is knocked open. Not only is there shit in the bowl, there's shit everywhere. I'm talking the walls. The walls, the floor, in the bowl, on the bowl, under the bowl. I'm like, what the fuck happened in here? And I walk by, I go to the stall at the end, I find one that's relatively clean, especially compared to that one, that fucking disgusting one. I'm like, what the fuck happened in there? And I hear, shablunk, 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 while I'm going to the bathroom. And I walk past, as I'm walking out, I pass that stall again, and the janitor is in it, and he's plunging, uh, because that toilet was fucked up. What he, I, I, I expect him to be like, plunk, and then, you know, for there to be like poopy water spraying up. Instead, what I find is, he goes, plunk, and pulls the plunger out. What is attached to the plunger is someone's clothing, meaning not only did they shit everywhere but just like lo siento and i hope they serve beer in hell whoever this person was shit so hard that they either pooped all over their clothes or they had to use the clothes that they were wearing to clean their own asshole so Blunk pulls out nasty poop covered looks like an undershirt uh also on the floor already are pants and i'm like holy shit Somewhat actual holy shit. Someone had to leave. Well, I, I hope they had a change of clothes, but I'm pretty sure someone left this bathroom naked because they had to shit so hard. And, you know, thinking back to what my aunt had to deal with when Ooh was here and she was like, I hope you never have to scream at your own asshole. I'm like, I bet this guy cried with his asshole. Just, just oh, the tears must have been streaming down his face while he shot shit all over the walls, all over the toilet, under the to the under the toilet one is what confuses me. Like, how do you even do that? Did he like pull his pants down first, and he was like sort of crouched, so it was like. <laughs> Did he look like the deer from Castle Crashers when the when the big black glob thing is chasing you, the one deer that just shits for propulsion? <laughs> Did, did he look like that? Did he lift himself up? Is that why he couldn't aim? Like, it was like, oh, I can't sit because it's like a rocket. And you're... I, I didn't think anyone could actually shit that much. But apparently, it is possible. Ugh. All right, so I don't know if I've told you this before. I think I've mentioned it. Um, but uh, when I went to Japan the second time, uh, we came back on a holiday. I forget what it was. Maybe it was like Easter or something because it was spring break. -y. Um, and when we came home, my, the, the second year that we went, there were only four of us. Uh, and when we got off the plane, like in the airport, it was my, my three friends like ran to their families. Everyone was so happy. And I was like, where's my family? I've been gone for like a week and a half in another country. Where's my family? And I'm like, well, they're probably late because they're always late. That's just the way they are. And my friend who I had also come with, uh, who had also gone on the trip, his, his dad comes over to me and he's like, well, uh, your family asked me if I could get you. So I'm going to take you home too. And I'm like, yo. They didn't even bother to come get me. And when I got home, the family event was basically over and my mom was cleaning stuff. And like, she didn't even, my mom and my sisters were there. They didn't even care that I was home. And like, 
I, I will bring this up all the time because I think it's very important if you're part of a family and you go somewhere on vacation and you're without them. I think it's very important when you come back, especially when you're like a teen, you're in your formative years and what have you. Well, I guess technically your formative years are a bit before teenhood, but you know what I mean? Like when you're, when you're young and you leave to go somewhere, I think it's very important that your family comes and fucking gets you. Okay. Cause it, it just reinforces that they want you to be there. They're not like, oh, you were gone. I don't give a shit. That shit hurt. That still hurts to this day. And I bring it up every once in a while. And I just can't understand. Like, not only did they not come get me, they thought I wasn't important enough to come get. But on top of that, they didn't give a shit when I got home. They were like, oh, help us clean up the table. I was like, I wasn't even here for this. Like, I didn't even, I haven't eaten. You guys had like a family dinner. I didn't eat. That's fucked up. And you're like, come here, clean the, t- fix the table for me. Fuck you. Fuck you. And I bring this up every once in a while. I'm like, you guys didn't even come get me when I came home from another country. Like, I, I honestly owe you, I owe you no semblance of, of family. I owe you none of that shit because you've never shown it to me. And I, 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 this, 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 this bothers me to this day. And my family will come up, they'll be like, well, uh, we were busy. And I'll be like, yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. And you, you know, when you're, you're upset about something and your, your voice just goes up really high because you really have nothing else to say. Fuck you. There's, 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 there's nothing else. You're not going to explain to them that that hurt because they don't give a shit. And like, I just, ah, drives me crazy that to this day they'll be like, whatever. No, not whatever. That was an important part of my childhood, like to see, well, first of all, to go to another country, even though it was the second time, it's still pretty fucking cool. And then to come home to this family that you hate, that doesn't give a shit about you at all, that sucked. I remember like watching them and being so happy. Like I, I, I personally, if I'm out at a restaurant, like I've said it with the guys, like if I'm with Bauer, Knox and Grimjack at a restaurant and we see like a kid playing with their parents, I get fucking jealous of that. Like, I, I didn't have that experience. I'm not money or porn. I mean, I might use up both of those. But my dad doesn't care. My mom doesn't care. Like, I get jealous of shit like that. And like, to see all my friends run to their families and be like, woohoo, we're home, and everyone happy, and no one came to get me, that hurt. That, that really hurt. And that's going to stick with me. So I can't understand why... My family to this day will be like, oh, well, we're your family, so you got to look out for us. I'm like, no, you don't look out for me. That's, see, you got you to gotta give to get. And they're not giving, so they ain't getting. It's just not going to happen. I remember I, I cried in the car ride home with, with my friend and his dad. I think his sister was there too. I don't know. Somebody else was in the car. Um, but I, I remember looking out the window and crying because my family didn't even think... It was, like, important enough to get me. And then, like, it wasn't important enough to be like, oh, welcome home. That That's fucked up shit right there. That's that's the kind of shit that'll fuck up a kid for life. So, don't, don't, don't be like my family. Like I've said before, my family's kind of like a treatise on how not to treat family members. So, so take this one to heart. Don't, don't do that. If, if your kid goes somewhere else for really long for well i mean it wasn't really that long a time but if your kid goes somewhere else for a while and they come back be there for them when they come back it's, it's, it's not right to not be there for them this it's just it's just not right it's not what family's about it's not what family's about hey there guys and gals thanks so much for watching as always if you click the link on the left you'll be taking the previous episode if you click the link on the right you'll be taking to the playlist where you can watch them all